Pum pa pum pa pum pa pa pum pa pum pa pum pa pum pa pa Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley and you're watching accesstv.org. Hi, I just want to thank the viewing audience for tuning in to another episode of the show, The Truth Hurts with Daryl. I just really want to thank you for all your support and, and, and watching me on uh, social medias. Um, today's topic is going to be a little controversial. We're going to be talking about a topic that affects a lot of people in the United States of America and affects a lot of families in our communities. And that topic is absentee parenting, the missing link. Today, our special guest is Sharon Traham. And can you tell the young audience a little bit about yourself, Ms. Traham? Sure. Um, I'm a home, a home health provider. Um, also, I'm a parent and a grandparent. And uh, IT as well. Well, I just want to really thank you for uh, coming on the show and uh, making yourself available to discuss uh, this very important topic and issue of absentee um, parenting. Mm -hmm. um, were you yourself uh, a, a person who grew up with an absentee parent? Yes, I was. And. Uh, what absentee parent was not were, was not in your life? My mom and dad. So you actually grew up without both. Yes, I did. Your mother and your father. Yes. And can you tell the viewing audience a little bit about your story? How how did you actually um, become a young person, a youth without without a father? Well. It's been said through the family that uh, my st stepfather wanted to give my, uh, wanted my wanted his sister to raise me as her own. So are you saying that you you never knew you never knew I who know your father? Who, I don't know who my mom is. I just don't know who my biological father is. Okay, so you didn't know who your biological father was. Correct. Um, in in the case of your your mother. She was also absent from your life? Yes. And how did that come to be? How did she become separated from you or Apparently, distant from you? Apparently, I don't have the full details. I just know through family members that my myself, I had some involvement with me being separated with my mother. In your childhood, how many times do you think you actually saw your mother growing up? I'm going to say approximate five, five, hmm. five or more. Oh, just five times your entire time growing up? Yes. Mm -hmm. How did that um, make you feel being without your mother in, in your life, your biological Ang mother? In your life? Angry, angry as I got a teenager doll. So you, you felt you felt angry during the formative years yes towards your mother because yes. she was not in your life yes how did you feel not having um, your dad um, present in your life I feel the same way angry so it caused a certain level of, um, of anger yes mm. um, are you yourself um, an ab absentee parent Yes, I was. I was a um, teen mom. Oh, so you, you had a, a child yes. very young? Yes. Okay. And you indicate that you said that you were absentee parent. So you didn't have the opportunity to be in the lives of of your children? It was for, the decision was made for the best. Um, myself and the father was very young. We were still in school. 
Uh, we d didn't have money or things of that nature to provide for our baby. And we both decided to give his mom, uh, at the time, temporary custody. Mm. It must be kind of a difficult um, reality for, for a family structure. Um, you yourself not having a mother nor a father in your life. Well, your biological mother or father being in your life. And then you yourself also being an absentee parent. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of a sort of a, a an odd um, family structure. How do you think that? Um, well, do, do you do you have, does, does your children actually see you as a as a parent? No, I don't believe so due to the relationship. It's very strange. Do you, um, do you interact with your children? I interact, but it's not strong. Well, the uh, viewers may not know, what, what is your, uh, your family structure? How many children do you I have? I have three. You have three? Mm -hmm. um, are they girls or are they boys? Two boys and one girl. Boys and one girl. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you feel as if your children don't actually see you no. as parents. No. And now, how do you how do you how do you deal with that type of reality in terms of? I mean, how do you how do you actually know that your parent that your children don't see you as a parent? Just I mean, has by there been something that occurred? Just by how they relate to me on a personal level. So they're sort of distant, maybe? Yes. Oh. Are they um, condescending, uh, disrespectful to you? Have they shared um, negative words or have expressed things in terms of yes, how they feel yes, about you yes. as, a, as a parent? Yes. Oh. Yes. How do, you, uh, how do you deal with that Reality. I mean, how does that make I you feel? I could relate to some. I could relate to some of the stuff, but I felt, you know, I always advised them. You know, they want to know anything. You know, come directly to me about it. But so many whispers been in the air. It just caused a lot of he say, she say over the over the years. So as an adult, do you yourself, you know, you, you try to be involved in, in their I've, lives? I've, I've tried, but that has not been successful. <laughs> now, how did you actually feel growing up without knowing who your dad was? Mm. I felt robbed. You felt robbed. Mm -hmm. And you're saying you, presently you don't know who he is. Never did. Mm. You know, it's th that, that reality is kind of hard, you know, for actually for me to fathom, but it's probably the reality of a lot of people uh, in the society. You know, we have quite a lot of people in the United States who um, are dealing with um, single parent mm -hmm. family households or have an individual who where there's a dad or a mom who's not around whether it be from a divorce or a separation mm -hmm. um, do you feel that that is beneficial for a child to be raised by both a mother and the father? It's very, it, yes, it is very much so beneficial, but that's not always the case. What do you think that benefit is for, in terms of a family structure, for it to have both a mother and a father in the household? I mean, balance. Yeah. Best of, I feel balanced, but, but in other words, best of both worlds. So it creates more of a balance? Yes. Do you think that like a child will grow up with um, a greater sense of stability or yes. possibly a greater sense of self-esteem? Yes. 
belonging if they they yes, have that in their life. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Do you do you sh do you see any um, evidence or uh, telltale signs of how the possibility of your children not having you actively in their lives, um, how it may have affected their lives? There's many telltale signs. Do do you do you see any like kind of direct correlation of how any of your children may have been affected by you not really being in their lives? Yes, I can see how it affected them very much. So, can you possibly share what you think that might be with with the viewing audience? Uh, how how do you think it affected your son not not to have his mother in in his life? He feels very, I wasn't there for him, so he feels very angry about that. He's expressed a yes, certain amount of anger, Yes, he expressed that. Um, has he described you in, in, in any type of way that might be um, negative or, or derogatory? No, but he have you know, but he has um, used some choice of words. How do, so that, how do you know that he's angry at you? He's directed his 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 feelings towards me on the phone. So he's he's like you said he's he's communicated with you yes. in a derogatory yes. way. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm-hmm. Do you have any ideas or suggestions for, let's say, a, a, a child who might be dealing with the absence of a parent in their lives? Do you have any, any words of en encouragement or something that you may want to share from the perspective as a, as a mother and as an adult? I, the only thing I can suggest is you know whoever is who, whomever is raising the kids other than the, the parents should try to educate the kids and not tell, tell them negative information regardless how that grandparent or auntie or brother whoever may feel towards the parent is is the grandparent or auntie whoever is take care of duty to educate mm -hmm. not discriminate i hear you sort of like in a way to preserve the identity of who that parent is a biological parent whether or not they've been active in their lives or not that it's not necessary to defame their their who they are and defame their personality kind of similar to let's say if you have a situation where there's a, 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 a single a father who's absent from the household. You don't have to denigrate completely who that person is and feed the child or the children with very negative views of who, that, who their father is. I mean, I would tend to think that that could in fact affect the, the child's self-esteem in terms of how the child sees himself or sees, sees herself. I mean, it's, it's bad enough if a, um, a child feels like they've been abandoned from a parent. That's a harsh reality. And I think that it may be made even worse if you denigrate the whole entire image of that parent. Now, you yourself, uh, didn't you have the benefit of uh, being raised by both uh, a mother and a father? Yes, I have. So you, you, as when you were growing up, you had a, sur you had a surrogate mm, yes. uh, mother and a father? I, I didn't look at them as mother, father, auntie, and uncle, more or less. Okay, so you're saying during your formative years, you yes. did have that benefit of, yes, of, two parent, yes. of a two-parent household. Yes. Most Which is definite. great. And um, how do you think having that, that two-parent household affected you as a person, affected your, your growth and your development as a, as a woman? 
I have great appreciation for it. It's made me who I am today. And would you say that was a really wholesome environment? I, I say so. You I mean, a no par no household is is perfect. It's what you make it. Did you receive a lot of love from from both that mm -hmm. male and that female who raised you? Parents show they love in different ways, but there was love, even if it wasn't the way we per we perceive love. Mm -hmm. So you said they expressed them, their love in different ways. Yes. So how do you think that your your the gentleman who was like your dad, how do he express his love to you? Like a father supposed to with his little girl. Mm -hmm. Did he treat you like a princess? Yes. Did he treat you special? Yes. That's great. Did he did he, <laughs> did he adorn you with, with gifts and when the when the wife was being special treated? I get special treatment. So he was kind to you? Yes. Which is great. So I mean, you, 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 at least you had that, that vantage had the point exposure, yes. in terms of being raised up mm -hmm. by a good strong man mm -hmm. and a good strong woman in the household. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. some, some kids don't have that, right. that opportunity. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you would like to also say to parents in terms of how you think parents should interact with their children? I mean, we live in a day and age right now where it seems to be a lot of uh, disrespect in the society right now where like roles are kind of like not very clear in households you know pretty much all of us come from dysfunctional families you know in some way shape or form you know there's no perfect you know family you know um, but you know given the climate in this society and in this country with a lot that's going on with the youth and young people what what would you tell parents what would you recommend to parents about how they should re how they should relate to their children and what type of lessons that they should pass on to their children well that's a tough question due to where i came from i just believe in old f old you know tough love tough love tough love you do you think that P parents should really try to instill respect amongst you know the children. I know a lot of parents nowadays. You know, a lot of psychologists talk about you know they want to be real. They want to be friends. You know, they they really focus on being friends with their their children. I see situations where you have parents who are uh, you know doing things around their children. You know that that in my generation was unheard of. Like I, you have children, you have parents. Uh, smoking weed with their children, mm -hmm. you know, doing drugs with their children, drinking mm -hmm. alcohol with their children. Mm -hmm. You have situations where you have parents who are allowing their children and the youth to be involved uh, sexually right inside their houses, inside their homes. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, you know, the relationships, the identities are kind of skewed. So like where you would tend to think the parent should be representing the right type of morality or the right type of role modeling for mm -hmm. the child. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of times where it's like the the way that the the adult or the parent is acting is really not setting an example for the child. And then, you know, we wonder why our youth act the way they act. Because I don't, I don't, I don't think that there's like they're looking for role models. They're looking for the right models. So if if you condone negative behaviors in a household, obviously your children are going to probably um, feel like they can do the same things. So, do you have any words of encouragement in terms of to, to parents who have that kind of res responsibility of raising children? You know. 
Mm. I don't even know how to even respond to that. Okay, that's all right. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to respond to that particular question. But you also had a, a unique vantage point of being actively involved in, in one of your child's lives. And can you tell the audience a little bit about that? Uh, were, you, were you actively involved with your daughter's life? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. So, so she was she she lived with you. Yes, she has. She lived with you, mm -hmm. and uh, I raised her. You raised her. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you believe that you you imparted some real good things and positive things to your daughter? That you that you you actually you know you actually imparted good things to her. You try to teach her the best things that you could teach her as a, a mother and, and tell her the right things? Yes. What, what are some of the things that you actually try to instill in your, in your daughter? Mm -hmm. Education, being independent, don't ask nobody for nothing. Work for yours. So you try to stress to her to be independent? Yes. To be responsible for herself? Yes. Do you feel as if uh, that she's listening to your advice? She, well, from, you know, previous um, conversations, she seems some, feel some type of way that all I care about is education. I never could understand what, what she meant by all that because that's what I strongly believe in. That's the background I came from. What we came was about, you know, hitting the books and do your, do your studies, you know, homework first, play time later. So what was all, where I came from, what was instilled in me, I needed to instill that in her because she's a part of me. I want her to be able to hold her, hold her own, mm -hmm. you know, support herself. There's nothing wrong with help. But you gotta help yourself as well. Do you feel like that she's retained some of this knowledge and this, the lessons and things that you've tried to not in teach her? Not in a good way. No, I don't think so. Mm. It's unfortunate. And then why do you say that you feel that she hasn't retained the type of things that you try to teach her, you try to instill in her? Because it's a combination to what what I'm saying in the home for I suppose, to outside the home. Oh, so you see that the vantage point of when she's lived with you, when she stayed with you, that she abided by the things that you said to her? Sometimes. Not but get her focus. But when she was outside your household, you think that that had a huge effect on her? Most definitely. Because there wasn't enough, there wasn't the support that I was seeking to, to, to assist me in working with her. Mm, so you feel as if you, she would have benefited from more of a support base? That's so, what she really needs. So you see yourself as a single parent mother? Yes, I do. Who pretty much had to deal with the, the burden and the responsibility of raising your daughter pretty much by yourself? Yes. Wow. <laughs> and that can be kind of a, a challenging, difficult struggle. It only became a struggle, struggle when she got in junior high. But as she as she was growing up through her younger years, she was a pleasure. I enjoy every minute of it. Now she was a sweet, sweet young girl. Sweetie pie. Mm -hmm. Can you actually pinpoint what you think may have affected her life in terms of helping, influencing her to make changes as where she started not listening to what you were trying to instill in her? So, like I said, so she got in junior high, that's where all the, you know, the confrontation started. Mm -hmm. And a little bit, you know, I could, you know, do for self kind of attitude. Can you recall what might be those outside influences that had an impact Friends, on mm -hmm. family, 
and whatever else in between. Friends, like, sometimes that, that I don't have knowledge of. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, parenting is a very challenging mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see that your role as a parent? Do you actually s see that you you're, you still embody that role mm -hmm. as being a parent um, to your daughter and to your your children? Yes. So you pretty are you pretty much have open arms in terms of being there for your for your sons and for your your daughter. Meaning that like if the, if your if your if your children were to reach out to you and they wanted to reach out to you for advice or they wanted to reach out to you um, for consolement and maybe they may be dealing with something that may be difficult for them. Do you feel as if that you're you're still there, that you're still there for them, as the, as their mother, as you know, as long as as long as they're mature enough to reach out to you and deal with you in a way that's respectful. I would have been open to that. You're saying that you would be open to mm -hmm. relating and, and and dealing with them, yeah. communicating with them, mm -hmm. and talking with them. Yes. As long as there's not that level of disrespect. That's right. Well, that's honorable that, you know, they say, you know, once a mother, once a father, always a mother, always a father. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really important. I see a lot of times some parents feel as if once their child gets a specific age, you know, you hit the age of 18, you know, parents takes the attitude sometimes, or oh, all my work is done, you know. You're on your own, you grown. That's kind of interesting. And then you see some families where that relationship between, you know, the mother and the, and the, and the, the children or the father and the children actually lasts their entire lives. That, that closeness or that friendship, you know, as long as they're both living, you know. I think that's probably more of an ideal type of situation where you have um, a child that feels that their parent will always be there, and a parent that feels that they they'll always can be there for their their mm -hmm. son or their daughter. Mm -hmm. It's probably a, a probably a, a better arrangement. <laughs> probably a, a better arrangement. You know, um, uh, Ms. Trainham, I really do appreciate you know the. Um, the candidness in which you you shared mm -hmm. on the show, the truth hurts today, um, and um, just wish you the best. You know, my prayers are with you, and wish you the best in terms of you use, utilizing all your knowledge and your your wisdom in terms of dealing with your your children. You know, um, and that and that you get whatever supports that you need to be able to keep dealing with your, your children mm -hmm. in a kind of a, a holistic mm -hmm. um, way. You know, so I just really want to thank you for being on the show, The Truth Hurt, and, and sharing with us. And uh, I just want to communicate to uh, the viewing audience, and I really want to thank you for being a part of the show, uh, The Truth Hurts, and thank you for your viewership uh, and, and, and your support. Because truly, this is the show where we explore the essential truth of a matter. <laughs>